If you don't like Wes Anderson, Asteroid City is not going to win you over. It's a film full of his typical motifs, quirks, and deadpan humor. A lot of the things that tend to annoy the Wes Anderson haters. He's often been criticized for being shallow or the classic style over substance. And I think because of Wes Anderson's far-reaching influence, especially with the internet-dwelling Gen Z crowd, he's become occasionally classified as overrated. And with the release of this new film, it got me thinking, is he really overrated? Wes Anderson no doubt has an instantly recognizable aesthetic. His work with longtime collaborator Robert Yeoman is iconic at this point. The wide lenses, dollies, pans, zooms, pastel colors, and of course the meticulous symmetry and blocking of each frame. I get it if it's not your thing. I am by no means a super fan. Not every one of his films has stuck the landing for me, but I don't believe he's ever made a bad one. In fact, there are a handful of genuinely great entries in his filmography, Asteroid City now being one of them. Although there are some warranted critiques you could make about the occasional absence of substance in a few of his films, for the most part, Anderson is trying to communicate something meaningful. With Asteroid City, it's not my place to explain everything that's going on, but there's certainly something there worthwhile. Before attempting to dissect every frame and line of dialogue to uncover its meaning, it is, at the very least, entertaining. The humor is there, the ultra-stylized sets and camera work is present, and its 1 hour 45 minute runtime goes by in a flash. There is an innate charm and wit that comes with every Wes Anderson film to satisfy us on the first viewing. We are immersed in this visually pristine world that he fills with an ensemble cast of which many have described as his puppets or mannequins. A fitting observation as there is a prominent meta subtext within Asteroid City, exploring the purpose of the medium of film and its individual components. Asteroid City is a play. The actor fills the stage and contemplates their own importance to the process of art and creation. The big name cast is never over embellished in his films, which is why I guess they love to work with him. It seems as though all of the work Anderson has done was leading to this eventual culmination of introspective reflection. That self-awareness has always been there, but this is one of his most contemplative works yet, a sentiment you'll likely hear others echo when discussing the film. That mid-50s pastiche couldn't be a more appropriate backdrop for the subject matter. The optimistic vibrance of the atomic age simultaneously contrasted with looming uncertainty and the facade of prosperity. Oh, and of course, UFO conspiracies. This allegorical connection to the new age of artificial intelligence and existential dread is perhaps what Anderson is hinting at, because underneath the film's idiosyncrasies, heartfelt quirkiness and blanket of comfort is a worrying melancholy. Not something that I had picked up on right away, but as I had more time for my thoughts to marinate, the dreadfulness of Asteroid City began to creep up on me. This uncanny aftertaste that I hadn't felt with any other Anderson film. It is much less focused on plot and more so a mosaic of sorts. It seems like a multitude of pressing concerns have been on Anderson's mind, and this is him airing them out and presenting them to us in an admittedly confusing way at times. Though, I don't think it is superficial. Am I doing it right? Jason Schwartzman's character asks us, by proxy Anderson's ponderance of what is most likely a question for several facets of his own life, including his place as an artist and the significance of his own voice. By no means am I suggesting that he is insecure or doubtful of his own capabilities, but eventually every great artist takes a step back in search of greater understanding and context. Film is in a weird spot right now. There is now more than ever a stream of meta-contemplative movies that seem to be a response to a medium that has gone through several evolutions. Is it reinventing itself right now? I don't know. It's all very strange. Wes Anderson has the same uncertainty as all of us. He addresses these concerns in a way that is not tautological of other films with similar themes, effectively embedding an aura of dread into an otherwise deceptively wholesome film. And there's something to be said about his ability to do that. So is Wes Anderson overrated? Asteroid City proved to me that he isn't. I think he is more than capable of living up to the creative and artistic abilities that many credit him for. And sure, some of his fans might go a bit too far in that respect, but on the other hand, there are just as many people ready to shoot him down. 
So sorry to the naysayers, but I think Mr. Anderson is properly rated. He's carved out his own space over the past few decades, only further building upon his artistry with each subsequent film. You can draw lines to his influences, but he is undoubtedly a unique visionary. Anyways, I've only seen this film once, and hopefully after another viewing, I will have pieced more of it together, because I think there is a lot more to Asteroid City than meets the eye. I'd go as far as to say this might be one of Wes Anderson's best films. Maybe that might be a bit divisive, but then again, most of his films are, so what are you gonna do? So if you made it to the end of the video, you might as well leave a like, and you might as well subscribe, you know, the usual stuff. And don't be afraid to comment, because I think there's plenty of things to discuss here. What did you think of Asteroid City? What do you think Asteroid City's really about? Do you think Wes Anderson's overrated, underrated, properly rated? Tell me what you're thinking. Start a fight with someone in the comments section for all I care. But yeah, thanks for watching.